Here are some simple, scientifically supported, and evidence-based methods that will help you fall asleep, stay asleep, get quality sleep, and wake up feeling amazing. Don't eat too close to bedtime. If you do choose to eat, avoid high-fat protein meals as they can take long to digest and may affect certain hormones, which can keep you awake, and you don't want that. Instead, focus on complex carbs. Also, it's a great idea to avoid spicy foods before bed. There's a very good chance, depending on your digestion, that they could make you uncomfortable by causing acid reflux symptoms. It's very likely that spicy foods will raise your core body temperature, which is the exact opposite of what your body wants to do when it's getting ready for sleep. Avoid napping too often and too long. Naps can be great when used properly. You want to avoid taking naps too late in the day, close to your bedtime, and napping too long, which is typically more than 30 minutes, and you don't want to nap too often. You'll decrease your sleep pressure by doing this. What happens is you end up not feeling sleepy, meaning you're going to have a harder time falling asleep. Pay attention to your caffeine intake. Notice how I didn't say cut out caffeine. Listen, caffeine is awesome. It can be leveraged for many benefits and is enjoyable to have from coffee, tea, pre-workouts, and energy drinks. When I say pay attention to your caffeine intake, I'm referring to the amounts you take in and the timing. These two are very important concerning your sleep at the end of the night. With amounts, this is trial and error on your part, as we all react differently to caffeine, digest and metabolize it differently. But you need to be reasonable. Don't do like this guy did. Like I said again, I'm your best friend, bro. This is a really bad idea. He got four bottles down, five bottles. That's, down. That's one 1,000 milligrams of caffeine. See, caffeine, yeah. So basically, I just said, let you guys know, that's like drinking 18 coffees All right. in two I'm, minutes. I'm, I'm starting to feel it. And expect to sleep well later. With timing, generally it's best practice to cut off caffeine past noon. Caffeine close to bedtime impacts your ability to enter deep sleep and cycle through the different stages efficiently, meaning that you might get a full night's of sleep, but the quality of that sleep is not going to be the greatest. Avoid stimulating activities before bed. Ideally, you want to be doing something before bed that is a combination of something that relaxes is you, something that you love, and something that you enjoy doing. There is no right or wrong answer here. At the end of the day, it comes down to you figuring out what works best for you. Try to limit what you do in your bed. Cut and dry, it's simple here. Intimate activities in the bed or actually sleeping. Sleep and wake up around the same times. Your body works on a circadian rhythm, which the term circadian means approximately 24 hours. Within a given 24 hour period, your body is essentially programmed to be undergoing certain processes at certain times within that period. Sleeping and waking at the same times consistently is gonna help your body get into a nice, smooth circadian rhythm, which is going to make it easier for you to sleep and it's gonna make it easier for your body to undergo all kinds of processes. Be aware of light exposure close to bed. Specifically, it's a great idea to reduce your exposure to blue light. Several ways you can do this. First, with your electronics, you can switch them over to night mode, or you can also alter the color settings on those devices. Or, of course, you can just power down those devices. You can also invest in a good quality pair of blue light blocking glasses. Blue light isn't necessarily the bad guy. Blue light becomes the bad guy, however, when blue light is present close to when you plan on going to sleep. Sleep. The reason for this is because viewing blue light close to bedtime, it's very likely it will halt the natural production of melatonin within your body. Lower the temperature in your room. The key to take note of here is this is the temperature in your room specifically. One of the processes that your body undergoes when prepping for sleep is lowering its core body temperature. Ideally, your core body temperature drops by a degree or two. Lowering the temperature in your room specifically will essentially help cue your your body to get ready to start dropping its core body temperature, meaning that this is going to make it more likely that you're going to fall asleep fast. Morning sunlight. Your eyes pick up on specific rays from the morning sun that sets off a timer within your brain to go off 12 to 16 hours later, which will cue your brain and body that it's nighttime and begin to get ready for sleep. The morning sunlight really helps set that circadian rhythm that I talked about earlier in the video. 
Do not overthink or overstress a bad night of sleep. Full transparency here, my sleep is not perfect. I still have bad nights of sleep myself. Here is the cold hard truth about sleep. You literally can do every single thing right from the moment that you wake up throughout your entire day leading up into the night when you lay down with the intention to fall asleep and you still have a bad night of sleep. And guess what? That is okay because an occasional bad night of sleep will always happen. What you wanna pay attention to is the frequency of those bad nights of sleep. You can't avoid bad nights of sleep. So the next time when it happens for you, my best advice is to absolutely Try your best to forget about it, move forward, and go about your day. Sorry, no pets. Unfortunately, there is much evidence out there to show that pets, while you're sleeping, if they are in the bed with you, will harm your sleep quality for various reasons. It's fine to let them hang around in your room, just not in your bed while you're sleeping. Try out white noise. Having white noise playing in your room while you're winding down for sleep can help you transition into sleep more smoothly. You can look up white noise videos on YouTube or use a white noise app. Blackout during sleep. Lights out. Do your best to eliminate all light from your sleeping environment. Even small LEDs from a TV or a computer can be picked up by your skin and decrease your sleep quality. If you're going to use night lights, make sure they are dim and low to the ground. Do not force yourself to stay awake if you're tired. Pretty much, Go to sleep when you're tired. This is a huge mistake I used to make when I would stay up, watch another YouTube video instead of going to sleep when I was sleepy. You can end up missing a crucial window where it's easy to fall asleep and you may get a second win and find it hard to fall asleep until far later in the night. Disable notifications. The simplest way to do this, shocking, right? Actually turn your phone off. Or many phones have a silent mode that will disable notifications for you and you can even allow specific notifications to punch through. Air quality. Most people are unaware that they are likely breathing in air with excess carbon dioxide or other pollutants negatively impacting their sleep. Research shows that elevated carbon dioxide in the air you breathe at night reduces sleep quality. The simplest solution to this is open up a window in the room you're sleeping in. However, this isn't available to everyone, obviously. And then also at the same time, it's just not reasonable as well. The good news is you can look into getting a snake plant. They are most active during the night and they act as personal air purifiers and are super easy to care for. Move that body. There's too much evidence out there to show that exercise improves all areas of sleep. Generally, it's safest to not exercise close to bedtime, but recent studies have shown that even exercise close to bedtime helps sleep. It varies based on time, intensity, duration, and type of exercise. At the end of the day, you need to do what works best for you. If you can fall asleep fine after a late night gym session, then by all means, keep doing that. Do not keep trying to force yourself to sleep. For some people, it's a good idea after 15 minutes, if you can't fall asleep, get out of bed. You don't want to be lying there with anxiety building up of why you can't fall asleep. Get out of bed and go do something to take your mind off sleep. You'll eventually get sleepy again later Later, then you can give it another try. For some of you, it's fine to stay in bed, but really stop trying to force sleep. I don't care what it is. Get on your phone, get on your laptop, open your eyes, do whatever it takes to take your mind off sleep. Sleep medication only helps you pretend sleep. No matter how hard it is to sleep, looking at your lifestyle and habits is more important than going for sleeping pills. Sleeping pills don't address the root cause of your sleep problems. They only mask them and help you pretend sleep. I say pretend sleep because most sleeping pills just sedate you. They don't actually put you in a state to where you go through natural, deep, anabolic, restorative sleep. I'm not here to demonize sleep medication. Sleep medication is very important for serious conditions and also in situations where someone needs to get out of a place of suffering in the short term. When it comes to sleep, no one should ever be in a place of suffering. I don't care what avenue they need to take to get out of it initially, whether it's through a supplement, through medication, some kind of meditation or practice, or some program or lifestyle change. No one should ever have to suffer with sleep.
Limit the nightcaps. Alcohol actually does help you fall asleep faster. However, the story does not end there. There's simply no way around it. Alcohol destroys deep sleep and also dream sleep. The only thing that alcohol is gonna do for you in terms of your sleep is simply get in the way of your body's ability to go through all the natural, anabolic, restorative processes that happen when you're in the deepest stages of sleep. Here is the best part about all of this. All you need to do is choose at least one of these tips mentioned in the video and start slowly implementing it and over time your sleep is going to improve. If you got value from this video, smash that like button. If you're looking to improve your sleep, make sure you subscribe. Thank you for watching.